Hey everybody, how's it going? I hope you're all having a lovely day. So today I'd like to read a comment that I received and read it along with my pushback because I genuinely disagree with this comment, even though I believe that it was left in the best of faith. So this is from an individual who doesn't like the fact that one of my recent thumbnails had utilized an AI-generated art piece for the thumbnail. He says, Nice video and thanks for the news. I would like to, however, ask you to stop using AI images for your thumbnails, as you did here, since they are exploitative to us artists. Not a knock on you since it does not take away from the content of the video. My response was as follows. No, they're not. This is reminiscent of the 1930s to 1940s claims that recorded music exploited live musicians. We went through this 100 years ago when technology evolved and we'll go through it again. This stuff reads like insane propaganda now, but at the time people were actually arguing this and they're doing it again with AI generated art. And I pointed to some particular pieces of propaganda and art and news and commentary that you could find from approximately 100 years ago. It says, banish music, the robot at the helm, canned music in theaters and musical culture. You could see canned music in theaters is bashing the musical culture. Is art to have a tyrant? Mechanical music in our theaters, a prophet without honor. And you can see the robot is playing the dollar sign because the movie theater is saving by playing a pre-recorded tape reel or record rather than having a live band there. Making musical mincemeat, can music in theaters, uh, bang, bang, biff. And it's, you know, they're saying that it sounds horrible compared to normal. And then you have this one, which is really funny. You have these two lovers here on a boat. And instead of having somebody on the boat playing a violin for them, you have a gramophone with a gramophone caroling love songs from amidships. Will the infant be put to sleep by machinery? Then you have a ridiculously oversized gramophone here next to a baby that is crying seemingly because it is so horrible that this pre-recorded music rather than orchestra being played in their own home. Like if anybody who can afford in the 1930s or 40s to have a live musician playing music to their baby to have them fall asleep and uh, let into strife by a machine and you have a car with a giant gramophone and it looks like he's getting into a crash or something because of the horribleness of the music. I mean, this stuff is funny right now. Obviously, it seems ridiculous, but 100 years ago, this was a serious argument and it was actually a thing and it is going to be a thing again with AI art. Now, I'm obviously biased when it comes to this because if you look at my business model over the past 15 years, I essentially give away virtually everything for free when it comes to knowledge. And what we're talking about here, when I see the comments about this, there's, they say things along the lines of, I did not consent for the AI to learn off of my art, which then begs the question, do you get to choose who learns off of the content once you put it into the world? If I put a piece of content into the world, can I say it's okay if Jessa Jones learns something about MacBook repair from it, but goddamn Mark Schaefer, he's not allowed to learn from any of this. How much control do you have over this work when you put it out into the world? You can say with certain licenses, this person is allowed to reuse my exact image for profit, this person cannot, but that's an entirely separate argument altogether from whether or not somebody's allowed to learn off of it. I can't go on Google Image Search and then use a, an image that has a license that requires that if I'm using it for business that I need to pay them and then use it for free. But does that mean that I can't look at that image and learn something about the, the, the way that they structured their lines or the coloring structure or get some sort of influence? Does that mean that I cannot compare their drawing with mine as I'm learning how to draw and then become better at drawing as a result of seeing, oh, that's how you handled this difficult to do thing. I'm drawing my line improperly or something like that. When you look at the history of my own company, I have posts on Mac rumors dating back to 2009 and 2010, giving away parts compatibility info so people can fix their stuff. I have repair.wiki here, which has very, very detailed guides, many that I wrote, many that Tim Herman and Jesse Cruz and others wrote and contributed to on how people can fix their own stuff. And I also have boards.rossmangroup.com over here, where I have one of my mentors from 10 years ago, Dos Informaticos, answering people's questions with very specific targeted answers. So you can pay 29 bucks a month, join this forum, and then you have somebody who I look to when I need help who will answer your personalized questions. And then I also have all of these videos over here, teaching board repair, so this is, you know, what you do if um, if you, you don't have USB or USB-C MUX circuit is not working or there's no green light in the charger. You have all these different solutions over here. What would it be like if I said, you're not allowed to learn from this or I get to pick who gets to learn from these videos how to do board repair? And to be clear, I'm not saying you're not allowed to re-upload my video to your channel and profit on it. 
Not, I'm not saying you're not allowed to copy and paste my guide that is on my nonprofit open source wiki and then sell it on your website and claim it's yours. Because that would be that that's a reasonable thing for somebody to be mad at. Wouldn't that be weird if I said you're not allowed to learn from what I've put out into the world? Uh, per, honestly, the way I see this is if you believe that you have the right to say who does and does not get to learn from whatever it is you produce and what, what you put out there into the world, uh, stop putting stuff out there into the world. Now, obviously, nobody wants to do that because that would not allow them to promote their content. It would be much harder to make money. But the, that, that's a fact of life. When I put this information out there into the world, there are people who are going to learn how to do my craft that may at some point compete with me. And such is life. That is the way this works. The idea that somebody could say, I do not consent to this robot being able to learn off of my work is very similar to somebody saying, I do not consent from other people being able to look at my work and realize, oh, that's how you're supposed to draw the line if you want the image to look more 3D. Like people are going to be able to learn off of the work that you produce. And I really find it funny that we're having this conversation 100 years after we had this conversation about recorded music. Obviously, at this point in time, we find it completely effing ridiculous, the idea that a theater playing a pre-recorded version of Hans Zimmer or James Horner's soundtrack is exploitation versus having a live orchestra there in every theater across the country. There's something that I find particularly cringeworthy about the idea that you get to choose not just who profits from your work, that's one thing, but who is able to even learn from your work. Like once you release something into the public that you get to say, you're allowed to look at this and learn, you're not allowed to learn while you look at this. It's just, I, I, I don't like that. And I don't think that there's a way for people to draw the line there in a way that doesn't wind up being massively restrictive and horrible in many ways. But for some reason, an AI thumbnail, that's just that's a bridge too far. Now, my thumbnail artist actually responded to this, and I'd like to read his response. He said, so I made this thumbnail. I've been doing thumbnails for Lewis for a little over a year now, and they're all in this playlist, and I'll link it down below. Only the recent Radio Mac and New York City thumbnails use AI-generated art. The rest are mine. As you can see, I've basically kind of learned graphic design on the job. I've also done a lot of compositing for recent ones like the YouTube one. I like to think I'm already a digital collage maker, if not an artist like those in Poster Posse. My entire workflow still is an AI. I still edit the image, clear it up a bit, and then work on achieving enough contrast so that the text is readable. The prompts are also my original ideas and are usually formulated over multiple iterations. I'd have collaged a couple of buildings drowning in cash either way. This just helps me speed that part up and convert my idea into something tangible really quickly. That is the essence of art, the visual representation of an idea. While your concerns are understandable, and this is where I disagree with my thumbnail artist, by the way, I'm not asking it to remake what you just did. Van Gogh's estate can't sue a person for drawing something entirely unique in the style of Van Gogh. For example, if you sort r slash art by the top posts of all time, many are inspired by Edvard Munch's The Scream or Johannes Vermeer's Girl with a Pearl Earring but they're unique pieces of work. An artist's work is based upon the knowledge they gain from what they learn. AI just has an accelerated learning process and a capacity to learn more than many of us could ever learn in a lifetime. It does not store the images, it just parses multiple images in their descriptions to understand the patterns that must correlate with a word. I don't think AI can do everything yet, there's a lot of human input involved at every step in the process. I do respect many artists, though, and there will always be equal demand for real human work whose creation can be vetted by experts. I am not trying to replace an artist. I still am learning how to create art despite AI's coexistence. For me, it is the tool in my belt. I think it will be a shame if the communities go at odds with each other as they are right now, as there can be a common ground here. No, AI prompters are different from artists. Prompters would be the right term, not artists, but not all AI art is bad either. People have been using content to wear fill and auto cutout programs for years now, and they follow a similar pattern. Somebody else comments, does any artist create works from a vacuum, never having seen any other art and draw on their styles? Another person commented, AI-generated images are transformative work, it doesn't breach copyright, and it doesn't exploit artists. People who make these claims do not know or are just willingly, willingly ignoring how the technology works. And yeah, I agree. Uh, if a robot comes out that's better at board repair than I, I'm not going to be sitting here saying, I only license humans to be able to look at my work and use that as inspiration while learning how to draw 
versus robots. Yeah, and, and when AI gets good enough to start fixing boards and you have little robotic hands and everything, I'm not gonna be sitting here saying, you know, oh, this is exploitative. How dare they use my wiki be to learn how to, how to fix boards because the entire point of all this content that I've been creating over the past 10 years was to help educate people. And that means people as well as robots. People are going to learn from the work that you put out there into the world. That's a reality of life. And if you don't like it, then you can stop putting your work out there into the world. And obviously people are not going to do that because not putting your work out there into the world is even worse than having an AI that just so happened to make an image that may or may not have learned from your work alongside the work of millions and millions of people. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. Lastly, before we end the video, if you are somebody who has expertise in how to do component level board repair or any types of repairs of very popular consumer electronics, repair.wiki would be more than happy to have your submission. And there are also certain submissions depending on the demand for that particular product to have a guide written for it that we are happy to compensate you for as we have compensated some of the people who have written these guides. And I welcome your email, lewis at fighttorepair.org if this is something of interest to you. And also, just a shill, we do have boards.rossmangroup.com here, where for $29 a month, you can ask your questions about your particular board repair issue and get answers to those particular questions that you have from somebody who was one of my mentors in the early day, who's really good at walking people through exactly what it is they should do to try to get a solution for their particular board problem. We do pay him for answering all these questions, and he does a pretty kick-ass job. If this is something that you do not have money for, we also, as I said, have the free repair wiki where you can read tons of guides on every single model MacBook and iPhone and other things as people continue contributing to it so that you can then learn. And obviously we are not going to limit this at any point to say that an AI is not allowed to learn from it. I may say that a cat is not allowed to learn from it. Blackberry the cat. Yes. You cannot learn board repair, Barry. You cannot learn board repair. Chat GPT? Maybe. But you, you're here to be my Barry. With that, we will end the video. Bye now.